Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us for today's tech demo. We're going to be taking a sneak peek at the latest release of Unitrends Backup. I'm Kevin Collins from Unitrends, and I'm here with Jordan Warsoff. He'll be taking us through today's presentation. Don't forget, one lucky attendee will be walking away with a $500 Amazon gift card. We'll contact the winner via email after the tech demo. But before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. This session will be recorded, and you'll receive an email with a link to the on-demand version of the tech demo after the event. I would also encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can do so by typing them into the Q&A box on the bottom right of the player. We'll answer your questions at the end of the session. At this point, I'll turn it over to Jordan. Jordan, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin, and good morning uh, or good afternoon to everyone there. Uh, the agenda for today is to kind of start with a company overview, talk about Unitrends, the problem that we're facing and why we're here. And then I'm going to talk about the Unitrends solution. I'm going to talk about all the new stuff coming out in 9.1 and then talk about Unitrends as a whole. And then from there, I'm going to intersperse a product demonstration, how the product works, what it can do for about 20 minutes, and then reserve the last 10 minutes uh, for Q&A. Uh, so with that, why don't we go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'd like to start off with is our mission statement. Unitrends provides a radically simple, cloud-empowered, all-in-one connected continuity platform to increase IT confidence. Unitrends is there to provide an all-in-one platform to protect your environment, back it up, ensure your data is backed up, and be able to recover it anywhere, anytime, anyplace. That's our whole thing. That's pretty much it. We're kind of here to make your life simpler, have you spend less time in backups, more time worrying about recovery, and being able to go on with, uh, frankly, everything else that's uh, taking up your time of day. And we're happy. That being said, uh, we've been doing it for a while. We have over an exabyte of customer data that we're currently protecting. Uh, and uh, we're doing it worldwide. Uh, so as you can kind of see, uh, we're headquartered up here in Boston, Massachusetts, where I'm located. Um, our European headquarters is based out of London, uh, but the most important uh, team is our support and our development teams. They're based out of Columbia, South Carolina. And in fact, our entire support team is based out of uh, South Carolina. So if you call in, you're going to be calling into the Unitrends customer support team that works for our company, that understands our product, and is committed to finding and understanding the problem that you may be having and helping you solve it. Uh, doing so is a crazy committed approach. Uh, by focusing on making sure that our support team is the best means that you can rest assured that if any issue arises or problems come up, you're going to be able to have them settled and answered thanks to our dedicated support team. Uh, being able to be insured of that and kind of uh, verify that that's going to be, uh, you know, everything's going to be okay and that we're going to be able to help you with those problems is I think kind of vital and key and really a game changer for us. Uh, really enables us to be uh, kind of help you and make you more confident in your recoverability. So why is Unitrends even around? Uh, the big reason I think is uh, one is the data avalanche. Uh, over the next 10 years, uh, data is going to be increasing by a lot. As you can kind of see, whoop, admins and uh, are growing by about 50%, but data and um, servers and files and all of that are growing even uh, faster. So that means each individual is going to be responsible for more and more while having less and less support to be able to do so. So you need, as an individual, to be able to handle more with less relative time. And that's kind of crazy, being required to do that. IT is becoming more and more vital to our businesses and our departments, but not being allowed to have more uh, resources. So what that means is that your resources you utilize need to be more efficient in your time. Time is the one thing that you're not going to be able to get back. Unitrends believes in providing a solution that's going to be able to be efficient use of your time to allow you to get back to doing all the rest of your backup and recovery needs. The other important piece is being able to recover from those said disasters. As you can see, uh, being able to recover from the most recent disruption in an hour has been decreasing because of the increase in complexity. So with people able to only able to do less uh, despite having being responsible for more creates this kind of dichotomy where individuals and admins are not able to recover what's needed. So enter Unitrends. Unitrends try to provide a means to be able to help you effectively, quickly, uh, and efficiently recover 
from whatever may come around and being able to protect your entire environment, all while making sure that the day-to-day -day is even simpler. And our nine ones uh, solution that just came out makes it even easier. Unitrend's uh, nine one release is focusing on all the cloud, heterogeneity, ease of use, and along with some supportability that comes in the background. Uh, our cloud uh, extension, uh, a lot of people are exploring and looking at the cloud. Uh, one big piece that we enabled is our self-service cloud recovery. We're going to enable you to any place that you're replicating your data, whether that's Azure or Unitrends or whatever the case may be, you will be able to replicate your data up to those cloud, browse, search, and recover those files, bring those full backups back, and then be able to recover those individual pieces. It also increases your visibility so that your dashboards and reports can be able to have more information. On top of that, we're making sure you're in control. You're going to be able to have visibility into the data protected. You're going to be able to recover the data without any intervention. It's going to be secure. We're using our open SSL uh, replication. It's going to be optimized, making sure that we're only sending unique blocks so that we can rebuild it either locally or remotely. And we make it simple. I'm going to show you how this is done in just a moment. On top of that, Unitrend is going to have the ability to deploy our Unitrend backup software in the cloud. You can protect your VMs with our agents backing up the files in AWS or Azure, uh, and then you, or you can utilize those as hot backup copy targets. You can replicate your local data up to those sites, and then you're going to be able to all manage it from one central location. Really awesome, really cool, and really effective to be able to ensure your recoverability. On top of that, Unitrends also now offers our Office 365 backup. Unitrends is going to be able to protect your emails, your OneDrive, and your SharePoint in your 365 environment, all without requiring an installation or a change in your service and support. You simply give us and utilize our software as a service portal, and we're going to keep all of your data forever. Uh, you can recover individual emails, files, folders, SharePoint items within a couple of clicks, and all done automatically in the background. You can easily roll back in time to a specific uh, point in your OneDrive, for example, and you'll be able to recover uh, a file at that, that version, or even recover emails from a certain point in time, all simply with a couple of clicks and searching by what's in the subject or who's sent it and when. A lot of flexibility, and that's kind of our approach. So you can see you are focused on the cloud, you're curious, curious about the cloud, Unitrends is here to help support the cloud. The other expansion is our heterogeneity. With our 9.1, we're expanding our support for different operating systems and applications. We're going to have bare metal recovery built for Mac 10.10 and 10.11, and no other vendor out there actually currently supports bare metal recovery for those Mac servers. Citrix Zen Server 7 support, snapshot level backups, we're going to be able to, to provide that. On top of that, we're going to have full granular support for SQL, Exchange, and SharePoint 2016. You've been asking for it, we've been uh, testing it, deploying it, make sure it works, and it's going to be coming in 9.1. And lastly is our ease of use. Uh, Unitrends has always been focused on making sure that we can make our recoveries as easy as possible. And I think with our 9.1 release, we're accomplishing that even more. You're going to be able to come in, and we're going to be able to basically uh, enable you to recover even easier. We're going to be able to make it so you don't have to mount and use another interface for VMware file level recovery or Hyper-V file level recovery. You can simply do that right from within the interface, making the ease of use even more extensive. On top of that, we also have granular application consistency options. So now you can choose uh, the different application recovery options depending on what makes the most sense for your environment. And that's the kind of stuff that Unitrends is trying to provide. How do we make it easier? How do we make it more effective? And how do we make it more portable so that you're able to do the recoveries that you want to be able to do? On top of that, uh, we have enhanced tape and autoloader support in the current UI, which means you're gonna, it's going to be even easier to set up your tape backup copies and be able to manage and uh, adjust them as needed. On top of that, SQL Server databases, we are able to do multiple database recoveries at once. We, our reports have gotten uh, a proper cleaning and detailing, so you're able to get even more information, and they look better than before. And you can even configure now with more options. While by default, we tend to have a set of things that we normally set as default, uh, Unitrends is able to simplify the configurability and to allow you to do bulk operations for grouping assets, setting up backup jobs to make it even more efficient when utilizing Unitrends. So enough about the 9-1. Let's talk about the whole offering. So with Unitrends Backup, we break it down to our data protection platform is our main goal. 
We have the Unitrends backup software and the Recovery Series physical appliance. Both of these are going to be able to protect your entire environment and be able to recover individual files, folders, VMs, instant recovery, test your failover, and much, much more. On top of that, once you've performed your backups and you're able to recover, you need to get that data off-site. There's a lot of options, one of which is going to the Unitrends Forever Cloud, where you're going to automate your, your backups uh, to go off-site, and you can keep long-term backups in our Unitrends Forever Cloud. And then on top of that, if you need to, we can actually do white glove failover in our DR as a service. Nice thing is all of this can be tested using our recovery assurance, which can basically automate the testing and failover of your backups, uh, of whether that's a VMware recovery, Hyper-V recovery, or Windows recovery. You basically have a high level approach to be able to ensure that you're gonna be able to fail over and fail back in those disaster scenarios. So where does Unitrends even fit? It all begins with deploying our Unitrends backup software or recovery series physical appliance in your local network. You rack it, stack it, give it an IP, and then the uh, appliance itself uh, prepares a web page that's basically going to be your management console. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. I'm going to our demo lab where we have a uh, software version of our beta uh, currently running. This is actually a 9.1 beta. You can see it's running. Here I've got my dashboard, and this is going to be the main information hub for what Unitrends is able to provide. Not all the features that I talked about are in here yet, but I'm going to be able to show some of the big ones. So here I can see the errors, what's protected, what's not. Any issues that are coming up, I'd be able to simply come in here, and I can back it up uh, and find out the information I need to. I can see over here any, uh, any uh, settings I want to be able to tweak, a tour I want to do, and my system alerts are all here. I can see, oh. The Exchange client is no longer listening to connections. It's been down for a while. Cool. I know I need to go in and probably fix that if I want to be able to back up that exchange. I happen to know that we turned off that exchange machine, but that makes sense as to why it's not understood. Over here, I have the different tabs for the different functions I want to perform. Configure is how I add new assets to be protected. Protect is how I back it up. Recover is how I recover the pieces. Jobs are the different backup jobs that I have set up and the reporting features. Let's go ahead and look at where Unitrends fits. So Unitrends breaks up our protection to three main parts. We can protect your physical servers, your virtual servers. We can protect your, your, your NAS filers, your NDMP, and we can protect your applications. All of this can be done utilizing Unitrends' wide array of backup techniques and all included within the same thing. For physical servers, we're deploying an agent, backing up the files, and that way we're able to protect kind of at the OS level. We're backing up the files, we're backing up the operating system, and that way we can recover files, folders, uh, bare metal recoveries, and more. With virtual machines, Unitrends has integration with the APIs for VMware, Hyper-V, and Citrix Zen Server, where Unitrends can go in and back up those virtual machines by taking snapshots, taking those snapshots, and then either recovering individual files from them or recovering whole VMs. With our NAS devices, Unitrends can come in and either via sys or NFS, troll the directory and be able to uh, back up those files. Or with NDMP supported devices, Unitrends can come, get an NDMP stream, and then recover that NDMP back to a like uh, storage target. With applications, Unitrends offers the ability to back up SQL, Exchange, Oracle, and SharePoint uh, by doing application appropriate quiescing of those different applications backing up those application files and then able to recover them in various ways, such as recovering an individual email from Exchange, recovering a database from SQL, and much more. The nice thing is that those aren't the only applications we're limited to protecting. It's the ones we do out of the box automatically. If you have another application, it's very easy to simply dump a backup file and let us back up that file using one of our other methods. So as you can kind of see, a lot going on. There's a lot of protection ability that you really have with Unitrends. That's a word I made up, protection ability. And that's what Unitrends is able to do. We have the ability to protect oh so much. And really the focus is on the recovery too. It's super easy to set up a backup job, but most importantly, it's easy to be able to recover the stuff we backed up and be able to verify that. Let's take a look. So here I'm logging in and I'm going to set up a backup job. First thing when I want to set up a backup job is I have to configure and add the asset. Once that's done, I can come to the Protect tab or the Jobs tab and click here on the Backup Wizard. From here, I give the job a name, Test Backup Job, and then I have a fat pinky. 
Uh, and then I set up what type of backup I want to perform. Whether it's an agent-based, VMware, one of these applications, I simply select it, check off which servers I want. So here for this file for this uh, file level backup, I'll back up the files in this file server, SQL and Hyper-V, and by default, I back up all the files. If I don't want to adjust that or change it, I can simply click this edit button. I can go in and I can browse to specifically just back up certain folders by using an inclusion pattern. Here you can see I can browse through and just back up my, uh, my program data, for example. Hit save and that's all it'll back up. If I want to back up everything except for one, I, I want to back up everything except for a specific folder, I can come here to the exclusion and I can come in and very easily say, you know what, this whole drive, I don't want to back up. Hit save and that's good to go. Uh, I can even back up just one specific file by coming in this way, and I can simply go in, select the individual file I want to protect. Uh, I'm not sure if we have one here, here, the desktop.ini. That's the only thing I want to protect. And I set this up, and that'll be the only thing that's included as a part of this backup. From here, once I've selected what, and you can edit a bunch of different types. VMware, you can select which virtual disks you want to protect. Uh, SQL, you can select which databases, and so forth. Once I've set up what I'm protecting, how much I'm protecting, I set up when I'm protecting it. You create a schedule. So I can either run one job right now and back up all that stuff on demand, or I can create a schedule. By default, Unitrans uses incremental forever with most of our backup techniques, which basically means we're gonna run one full backup, and then from there on out, we're just gonna back up incrementally uh, those uh, assets. The assets are what Unitrans refers to what we're protecting. By doing incrementals forever, it means you're gonna reduce the load of backups that you're performing on the asset we're protecting. The caveat to that though, is that you need to build out some synthetic folds on the back end so that you can actually purge out older data. Otherwise, you're gonna have a chain that's built off of this master that you're not gonna be able to get rid of. Unitrends builds out these synthetic folds so that you're able to kind of get rid, you, you're not reliant on every single incremental. We can rebuild it and if something happens, it's okay because we still have the old, the master, we have the synthetic masters and all that. We can rebuild it and use that to recover. So here I can set up the schedule. Alternatively, if I don't want to use incremental forever, I can set up folds and incrementals by simply coming right here. And here I can set up how often I want to run my full backups and how often I want to run my incremental backups. Simply set the time. If I want to do it more frequently, I can check off this reoccur every maybe do six hours so I can do four backups. So here I'm going to do 3 a.m., 9 a.m., 1, 1 p.m., 7 p.m., uh, and those will be my four for the day. Hopefully that's pretty clear. Once you're done, you hit save, and that's going to create a new backup job. The nice thing is I can actually come to here, and I can see the status of all my backups. Here I'm looking at my asset, and if I had multiple appliances I was protecting, I'd be able to view and manage all of them from here. So here I can see all these green check marks. Ah, I have some exclamation marks. It looks like my Oracle server had a failure. Great. I can go here to detail. And I can see waiting on system load to drop. So it sounds like my Oracle server is way overloaded. I happen to know that it's a virtual machine, so I could probably go in and add some more resources to it or to go in and check that Oracle uh, VM to make sure it's working okay. See how easy it was to get that information? I know exactly why it's failed. Here with these successes, I can see the same thing. In case I'll have a warning or anything like that, I can view the detailed log of what went wrong. The nice thing is you may not even go into the dashboard and need to find this information. Unitrend sends out a daily report of your backups that were performed, and if any failures occur, you get a separate failure report that is sent out immediately that alerts you to the issue. So if it's a vital server, Unitrend has actually on several occasions alerted admins of a server failure before their server was even able to uh, notify them. Simply because we tried to back it up and the server wasn't responding, this would be able to detect a down server and be able to report the issue that was aroused, that had come up. As we all know, dealing with backups, the most important about backup is recovery. Let's go ahead and check out a few recovery options. So just to show you, I'm running a few backups and here in the recover tab, I'm kind of filtered by a certain date. I can go in and I can see the different assets I'm protecting, and from the drop-down menu, I can see the different uh, backups that have occurred in this date range. I can go back further, see how old the data is that I have to recover from very easily by adjusting the schedule over here. For this instance, I'm going to recover a virtual machine. Let's go recover this SQL server. I've got a snapshot of it. Here I can see my synthetic full. I want to recover the most recent one. Once I check it off, 
you'll notice that up here, the recover, recover files, and instant recovery have all lit up. When I select recover, this is going to recover the whole virtual machine. I give it a VMware host, a resource pool if necessary, and a target storage. Once I'm done with that, I go to next, hit save, and that's going to start transferring the VMDK to the target host and the target storage. And once it's there, it's going to automatically spin it up without requiring manual intervention. And that's kind of the point. Unitrends wants to make it easy to be able to kind of get that information to you. If alternatively, I wanted to recover uh, just the files from it, I can select this Recover Files option, hit Confirm, and what that's going to do is that's actually going to create a virtual failover, uh, file level recovery, which I can then utilize to browse, find the individual files I want to recover, and then restore them to the location I want to. I don't need to bother restoring the whole virtual machine just to recover a few files. I can simply use the Unitrends backup device to be able to do that. And that's kind of the point. Unitrends wants to make it easier and more effective to be able to do that. And right here in the file level recovery, there's my SQL server. I'm going to check it off and I can browse it. And voila, I've got the whole directory of the virtual disks. You can see there's even four of them. And I can select which folder specifically I want to download and then recover. It's that easy. The other one we talked about is instant recovery. And that's going to come up a few times. With VMware and Hyper-V, Unitrends offers an instant recovery for those virtual environments. What this will do is utilizing storage vMotion or live migration, Unitrends will spin up the virtual machine stored on the backup storage. It will then migrate it to the target storage I select here, and then all in the background uh, transfer it, utilizing the hypervisor's capabilities. And then from there, once it's fully migrated, Unitrends will remove it from its own backup and clean up after itself. You're not going to have leftover data stores or anything like that. It's going to be real easy and effective, and that's kind of our whole approach. How do we make it easier for you to be able to handle that? The nice thing is you can also utilize this to test your backups in an audit mode. By checking off this box here where it says recover this VM in audit mode, Unitrends enables you to actually spin it up without attaching it to a live network, and you'll be able to go in and verify that the VM is working. You'll be able to verify that it's performing the applications you want it to do, and you'll know the backup was successful. This is a great way to potentially even test patches on a VM uh, without actually having to run it in your production storage. You can just run it from your backup storage. We will simply not migrate it over, and you'll be able to use this to test and verify. It's really easy to be able to recover, and you can see there's a lot of options. If I want to recover a file from a file level backup, same thing. I check off one of these recover the files, and then from here, I can go in, browse the files that I have, and then recover which ones I need. Here's desktop.ini. We probably should have put much more interesting files in these. <laughs> Once I'm done here, I set up where I want to send those to. Note, I can go from Windows to Linux or Linux to Windows. Here I can send these, this Windows INI file to my Oracle server. Why? I don't know, but you have the ability to be able to do it. Set the directory, any commands you want to run, hit save, and you'll be good to go. On top of that, Unitrends also offers Windows Instant Recovery. Windows Instant Recovery is a really cool tool that not a lot of our competitors have. Windows Instant Recovery can take an agent-based backup, so our, our file level or OS level protection doesn't necessarily need to be a physical server. It usually tends to be, but it could be a KVM virtual machine, a Nutanix uh, virtual machine that's running when you don't have hypervisor support. We simply deploy our agent, back it up, and back it up at the OS and the file level, and then utilizing this Windows Instant Recovery technology, we can spin up a Windows server that we backed up just the files of as a virtual machine hosted on your VMware Hyper-V environment. That's right. You can do an instant P to V recovery without having to go through the process of a manual conversion. You can utilize Unitrends to convert it, prepare it, and spin it up. Some people have used this uh, to convert their own uh, servers, and that, that's totally uh, doable. We recommend utilizing the native tools, but it is definitely possible, and customers have utilized their backups. So that way, they don't need to worry about messing with their production to prepare the new VMs for their recovery. 
The nice thing is once you've created this virtual failover client and it's running, Unitrends can continue to back it up at the file level so that way when you bring back your physical server and you want to recover to it, you can utilize our bare metal recovery to replace the OS and the applications and then start recovering the files that you need. It's really easy, really simple, and really effective. And that's kind of our whole goal, being able to make it easier than, as, than ever before to be able to recover the pieces that you may need to do. Lastly, application backups depend on the application. But here for SQL, for example, I've got a bunch of transaction log backups based off of a full backup. I can select one of these transaction logs and I can actually recover back to that point in time with that SQL server. Recover back to that instance, the same database, and I can actually say, you know what, we had a corruption at midnight. Go ahead and I can actually roll up to a point in time right before the error occurred and then this is going to recover that SQL server right back to that exact point in time. We've truncated the log and you're going to be able to recover it and that server is going to be just as it was uh, at, you know, October 19th, uh, sorry, October 19th, uh, 11.57 p.m. And that's kind of the point. We want to make it as easy as possible to be able to recover and enable you to restore the pieces that you need to do. That's recovery. It's as simple as that. As you can see, creating the backup schedules is super simple. We can protect a lot. And then once it's all protected, you can very easily go in and recover the pieces you need. The nice thing is that all this can be managed from one simple interface. and be able to have a lot of options to be able to go through, browse, and recover whatever you may need to do. We've got the backups. That's good. We've shown how we can recover them. That's even more important. But that's not everything as part of a good backup job. For example, with ransomware and other things out there, uh, floods, fire, famine, uh, meteorites, uh, you do run the risk of losing your backup and your production. And that's where Unitrends offers backup copies. Unitrends offers backup copies to cold targets and backup copies to hot targets. The idea of basically taking your backups and copying them somewhere else. With our cold targets, that's usually a local uh, almost archived piece where you can take the data, store it on a SAN, a NAS, uh, archive it you know, to tape or to uh, RxDA, take that data off-site and then bring it back if needed or keep a long-term kind of uh, approach where you could basically keep your backups for a long period of time. With our backup copies to hot target, no manual intervention is required. We're going to automatically replicate over the internet using our WAN optimized replication to either a secondary recovery site or to the Unitrends cloud. The nice thing is that secondary recovery site could be a colo, it could be AWS, it could be Azure, uh, and much, much more. That's kind of the point. We want to make it as easy and as flexible as possible to meet what your needs are for your recoverability. The nice thing with the backup copy, the hot target, is once you're replicated at that secondary site, all the recovery options we just talked about, including instant recovery, are available. On top of that, you can even do the backup copies to cold targets at that replicated site. So for example, if I'm going to the Unitrends cloud, we the forever cloud that Unitrends provides, we keep that data forever. We pro provide a, uh, a grandmother, mother, daughter uh, strategy where you keep your data, uh, we do a rotation of seven dailies, four weeklies, 12 monthlies and then infinite yearlies after that. We're keeping that long term in our cloud. Uh, and if you have a failure, uh, Unitrends will uh, seed an appliance, ship it back to you, and then you'll be able to import and start those recoveries. Alternatively, if you need to have some kind of failover site in the interim, Unitrends provides a DR as a service. Within our cloud, Unitrends can spin up your VMware, Hyper-V, or Windows machines in our cloud within a one hour SLA and they'll be running in our cloud, failed over at our site, and you'll be able to utilize a VPN and public IP to fail over to us. And then when you're ready to fail back, we'll seed, ship you the stuff, do a plan fail back, get you the changes, and you'll be able to be back up and running in your local environment. The same kind of option can be done with your own private site, uh, but Unitrends won't be there to manage it all for you. We'll be happy to help, support you. We'll be happy to help you any way that we can, uh, but getting the data up there, getting the infrastructure and managing it is gonna be unfortunately on you. The choice is yours, Unitrend supports it, uh, but it's just simply an idea of basically, I've got my backups, but that's not protection enough. Three, two, one rules are still in play. Some people wanna do four, one, ones or other types of rules where I wanna keep multiple copies of my data in more locations and I want them recoverable. 
not just simply having a copy is sufficient. And that's where the other backup copy options come into play. So backup copy to cold targets, that's what we're gonna focus on first. You can copy the backups to them and you can import them back to any Unitrends appliance. The RXDA is a Unitrends a device it's a four port hard drive uh, dock that you can plug in hard drives to. We can copy and stripe across all of them and then you can take those backup sets off site. You can build out your own long-term backups utilizing the RXDA and you'll have no problem to be able to very easily uh, recover that if you can import into another Unitrans backup. And as you notice, it can easily go from the backup software to the recovery series appliance or vice versa. Let's go ahead and take a look how easy it is to schedule in our interface. So to set up a job, uh, I can either go to Protect or the Jobs tab. The Jobs tab is where I can see all the backups that are running. Here I can see my Oracle is running right now. Uh, I can see any jobs that are active. I can see recent jobs and recent system jobs. I can see if Fred from accounting came in and deleted some stuff when I wasn't looking. Darn you, Fred. Uh, I can see who's logged in, changed some settings, and all that information. In this case, I want to create a backup copy job. I simply come in here check off which backups I want to be included as a part of this. Uh, for VMware Hyper-V, I can select specific VMs. And then from there, I can simply go in and I set up the target I want to go to. If I was going to a backup copy to a cold target, I would set up a schedule. So I'd set up what types of backups I want to go, a report when it's done, what to do about the storage threshold, and then I can create a schedule. Uh, every day seems a little excessive to me. I'm going to do once a month. I'm going to start Friday evening, so I'm going to come over here, check off all of these, set it up for, let's say, 7 p.m., and I'll do it the first Friday of every single month. So this will go off probably November sometime. Hit save. That'll create a job, and that's the next time it's going to run. I'll copy those backups to it. Alternatively, if I want to go to a hot target, I'll select this, and no schedule is created. You read the five print there, which uh, you're welcome to do. It basically says that uh, every time a backup is completed, a new job is created to replicate that data to the off-site. Uh, basically, it's going to be automatically created and it's going to be replicated. However, I can understand the concern you might have about utilizing all the bandwidth to send a you know, four terabyte backup to another site. And don't worry, Unitrans offers the ability to very easily come in and configure your bandwidth utilization. Come here to the Appliances tab, under backup copy targets, I can configure my bandwidth on the far right. Here you can see I've got my replication target. I can simply come in, configure the bandwidth, set up how much uh, internet speed I have between them. Uh, we have a 50 meg pipe between the two. And then I can set up a schedule for how often and how much bandwidth I want to utilize at any given time. So for example, from working hours, we've limited to 20% replication. I can add in, say, you know what, on the weekends, I only want to use 70% because I still need to get some access to that. So here, boom, Saturday, Sunday, I'm only using 70%, but at night through the week, I can go full throttle, that's totally okay. That's what you're able to do here. Very easily be able to configure and set up that replication. The nice thing is once the data is replicated, you can actually recover those, uh, back, those hot backup copy items very easily back to your interface. So here, I'm gonna show you, I wanna recover some old data that I've replicated way back in the day. So what I'm going to do is it's sent off to a remote site, and here is all my file server backups. I'm going to come in and find these purple ones, which are actually synthetic ones that were created and are actually sent to another site. So they're not actually local. These are actually backup copies on the target. I'm going to check it off. And what I can do is you can see I can import that backup to source. So I can take that whole file server backup and import it, or I can actually browse the individual files from that backup back in June. So here, this is using the Unitrans Forever Cloud, so that's one of my monthly backups. I can come in, browse the files I want, select these PDFs from uh, the, year, the days of yore, where I've already deleted them, but I can come back here and recover them, hit save, and it's gonna import those, these files that I selected, bring it back, and then I can recover those to the targets that I want to. It's that easy and that effective to be able to recover those pieces. And the nice thing is that all of that can be examined and managed and monitored through the reports tab. I can see my backups. I can see a weekly status of all my backups and backup copies over the last uh, week. I can see you know, the check marks. I can sort it by specific appliance names. 
I can go to uh, see my backup copy, see the status of how much capacity I have. Simply come here, generate it, and it's going to tell me uh, the amount of data I'm currently protecting by backups of a backup copy of client's target. I could view and see how much data is there. I can see my data reduction uh, over the past month. Here I can see my data dedupl my deduplication ratio. Uh, looks like it was trending down, coming back up. Uh, probably had some more changed data, so there wasn't as good deduplication. But my total data reduction is in the like 18 to 19 range, so I'm getting really good uh, data reduction. And I can also even view uh, notification or traps or any other information that's come through uh, from my appliance. All of that's manageable right here with the interface. I haven't left it all. And that's kind of the important point. All of these backups and recovery are very easily managed right here from the centralized interface. And the nice thing is that all of this is super easily protected too. I can actually even go in and I can view, uh, if I want to get some kind of confidence in my ability to be able to recover, that's where some of the other uh, uh, product insurance has, such as a reliable DR, I can actually come in and I can uh, test the recoverability of my virtual machines. Reliable DR is able to go in and can spin up using the instant recovery pieces to test and verify the recoverability of those instances. So it's kind of a way to provide a means uh, for you to be able to be certain in your recovery and to kind of get generate a report that tells you, yes, for certain, we can recover and this is exactly how long it's going to take. And that's not something that a lot of uh, other providers can do. Sometimes they'll show you, uh, you know, that uh, with one, oh, whoops, number, 131. Uh, sometimes they'll show you, you know, hey, the login screen works or something like that, but nothing goes to the level where we're going into the application level and we're able to manage, deploy and configure and see exactly how long recovery is going to take. And that's exactly what our recovery assurance can provide. It can tell you for certain uh, how long it's going to take to recover the data under our RTO actual, how old the data is using our RPO and telling you whether or not it complies with what we set up. So here, for example, our Salesforce, we last tested six hours ago. Uh, that's probably when we last replicated it, and it took us nearly just under two minutes to spin it up. So here I have a report automatically and easily telling me exactly the recoverability, and it's testing it down to the application level. I can have multiple machines doing this and very easily be able to set up, configure, and verify that it's able to perform. So you can see there's a lot of stuff we went over. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of pieces that Unitrend is going to be really be able to help you with. And that's kind of our goal. We want to make sure you can protect your entire environment. We want to make sure you can send it to the proper places you need to do and that you can get it off site if you need it. And the nice thing is all of it can be tested. And I don't even get to talk about Boomerang. Unitrend's ability to take VMware VMs and send them to AWS or Azure and enable you to do migrations or even uh, fail over using those sites without even requiring any local storage. That's a story for another time. But uh, you don't have to take my word for it. We've helped so many customers in so many ways being able to simply reduce the time they're spending on unit trends and rather uh, being able to go onto the much more interesting and involved projects that enable IT to be confident in the recovery. So now let's start working on more production-based methodology. Uh, on top of that, you can just search for unit trends and ransomware. Uh, crypto virus has been prevalent, and as you may or may not have noticed, it's nearly, nearly impossible to outright prevent uh, completely. But that being said, a proper backup strategy is the best defense you can possibly have because it means for certain you can come back. And Unitrends has helped many customers be able to do that, not to mention our hardened, secured uh, Linux operating system that means that we're not even vulnerable to CryptoLocker. So even if your entire Windows environment gets wiped out, your backup will be safe and secure with Unitrends. All right, we saw a lot of stuff. We saw the noon stuff with 9.1, how it's going to be even more flexible even easier and even more effective to be able to recover. We saw how much you can protect, how you can be certain in your recovery by testing it. Uh, we didn't even get to really dive into, but our adaptive inline deduplication and compression means that we have more efficient utilization of our backup, and we provide a deep virtualization protection where we can go and protect those VMs uh, through the snapshots or through the uh, file level, whatever makes the most sense for you. We've got a ton of different cloud options and our awesome award-winning customer support team who is the pride, the pride and joy of our company. It's the only report that goes out to the entire company is the customer support uh, uh, 
report where we see exactly every single case is viewable to every single person in the company. We can see if there's any issues that came up, and if there's a problem and someone's not happy with the support, we'll come in and try to do our best to be able to, uh, you know, make sure that everything is right by you. The last thing I want to show uh, is if you like what you saw about the 9-1 beta or you want to try out Unitrends at all, uh, you can uh, do a free trial at the top of the screen. Go ahead and click free trial. You'll be able to download uh, your own version of Unitrends backup software, deploy it and test it out. And if you like the 9.1 stuff, uh, go ahead and sign up for our beta. Uh, you can go to pages.unitrends.com slash 9.1-beta, uh, or in our support.unitrends.com, you can see on the right side, sign up for the beta. Give us the information, we'll reach out to you, and you're going to be able to check out and uh, try it for yourself. So that's all I got uh, for now. I'm going to hand it, thank you so much uh, for your interest and time in Unitrends. I'm going to hand it back over to Kevin for our Q&A and any other uh, follow-up or other housekeeping notes we may have. Kevin, take it away. Thanks, Jordan. Great presentation. We've got a lot of questions that have come in, so let's, uh, let's jump right in and get started. First question is from Karen. Will, we, will you be able to restore Novell Netware files? Uh, sure. So, Karen, I strongly recommend, if you're curious about what we can protect, head on over to the Unitrends site and check out our compatibility and interoperability matrix. You can just simply search for Unitrends compatibility matrix. Come in here and you'll be able to see the different uh, operating systems we can protect with Novell. We have quite a few options. Uh, well, with the NetWare, we have a few options with that, but basically if we're able to protect it, uh, we're able to come in and we'll be able to do that. So here you can see the NetWare uh, different versions that we have. We can come in, protect these ones, and if they're in our cloud, you'll be able to recover those files. So you back it up local, replicate it up to the Unitrans Forever Cloud, and you'll be able to go into our, uh, you know, and be able to recover those files as needed. Okay. Next question, Phil had a couple of questions. Is the Unitrends Cloud your own or a front to another? Uh, the Unitrends Cloud is uh, managed, deployed, and uh, administered by us. Uh, it's a secure, um, oh my God, SSA 16 uh, certified cloud. Uh, you can check out some of the FAQ and security details on our website, but we manage it from top to bottom and we'll help you with all the support. Uh, configuration and uh, protection that you may uh, have or need. Okay, and Phil also asked, is there encryption at rest and in its location? Sure, uh, all data is encrypted in transit uh, using OpenVPN uh, with the OpenSSL encryption. If you're looking for a local encryption, Unitrends comes uh, with AES-256 encryption. Uh, you can choose to enable it or not, uh, it reduces your uh, storage efficiency, but yes, absolutely we have encryption is an option. And if you encrypt it locally, all data that's replicated, sent, and transmitted will be encrypted at rest as well, at its, at its target too. So if you replicate it, if you encrypt it at the source, then the target will keep it encrypted as well. Okay, let's see, next question is from Dale, if we're running nine, Dot o now, if we go to 9.1, is that an upgrade in the in place or a, a new start from scratch? Uh, upgrade in place. Uh, all of our upgrades for the most part have been upgrades in place. So yeah, if you're running 9.0-15 uh, and you upgrade to 9.1, you'll simply be able to go right into your interface, say I want to upgrade to 9.1, they'll download, deploy it for you, you'll have no loss. Uh, you should ideally have no loss of backups, make sure you have a backup copy in case something happens. Uh, but there should be no issue in most cases, and you will not need to uh, start from scratch. Okay. Let's see. Next question is from Sylvester. Do you have UK data centers? Yes, we have uh, data centers throughout the globe. Uh, we have them in Germany, the UK, Canada, uh, Sydney, as well as America. So you can uh, keep it within your borders. You don't need to worry about it. If you replicate into a, a data center in one of those sites, you will not be crossing the borders and you will stay within those countries' uh, boundaries. Okay. Let's see, next question is from Pat. Are there plans for KVM hypervisor support? Yes, that is on the roadmap. As of today though, we have found uh, the ability working with uh, OS level backup and protection has been sufficient, but we are working uh, to, to see if we can develop uh, ways to do 
uh, KVM snapshot level protection. So we currently support KVM hypervisor by uh, doing you know, OS level protection, but we are working on hypervisor support uh, shortly. Okay, let's see. Next question is from Eric. Will Kroll still be required for granular exchange recovery with 9.1? Uh, yes, uh, for the uh, near future, Kroll simply just does it so well that we couldn't find a good reason to leave our partnership with them. But yes, as of right now, we will uh, require Kroll to be able to recover those pieces. Uh, but uh, Unitrends fully supports and uh, deploys it, so it should feel like an extension of our product. Uh, if you have any issues, you call our support team, and we'll be able to help you and go through with how to manage and deploy that. All right, and Mark had a couple of questions, and this might actually be very similar. Uh, will 9.1 allow for granular restores of exchange items, or will a separate on-track license be required? Same question, yeah, yeah, so that crawl will still be required uh, for that. 9.1 allows for better integration, being able to recover that stuff from the remote sites, but you will still need crawl if you want to recover individual emails or individual uh, items or folders. Okay, next question for Mark. Can we spin up a virtual server from a backup within the appliance, or does it have to be restored to a VMware Hyper-V server? A good question. With the physical recovery series appliance, you can recover uh, Windows Instant Recovery sessions to the recovery series appliance, but any VMware or Hyper-V Instant Recovery needs to be recovered to those hypervisors. And last question, is there a way to just copy change data instead of a full backup to a cold target to decrease WAN traffic to an offside NAS? Well, cold target, we don't support going over the WAN. So as of today, we still don't deduplicate and don't compress because we assume that it's something that's going offsite and will have no connection to the uh, fulls. Uh, hot backup copies will only send the, the change data uh, and in fact, only send unique data because of the scanning we're able to do. So if you're looking for that, you'll need to use uh, our co backup copy to a hot target option. But if you're doing a cold backup copy, unfortunately, we're just pushing all the data out there because there's no uh, brains on the other side. We're just assuming we're pushing the data onto it, leaving it there, and that's what it's going to be. Okay, so Nathan has a couple of questions. Is there a way to set policy automatically for any new machines that are added to the system, such as new VMs, containers, or physical machines that might be spun up? Sure, you can simply go in uh, like so, and when you set up the backup job, for example, with uh, VM backups, or actually let's show you, a, so if I set a new backup schedule for VMs, you notice I can check off uh, a few, or sorry, for SQL, for example, that was the one I meant, I can automatically include new databases that are added. So it'll scan every time it runs the backup, and if there's a new database added, check this off, and it's gonna automatically add uh, that database uh, to our um, to our the schedule whatever schedule I set up. So there are ways to do it with certain uh, applications. You can definitely perform that. Okay. And the next question: Is there a way to do a verification of an incremental forever without doing a restore or creating a new synthetic full? Um, I guess it depends on what you mean by verification. There's a lot of options. Uh, one is to verify the backups, and you can do that here by checking out the verify backups. This does add some time, but it will hash and check to make sure the data, uh, that no data is lost uh, with those backup copy, uh, with the backup that's performed. Alternatively, if you're looking for that automated testing, uh, that's where the recovery assurance with Reliable DR would play into that, where you don't need to manually come in. Reliable DR will automatically spin up those machines, and that way, if you know that the VM can turn on, the application works, then you know that the incremental backup was successful as well. Okay, let's see, what do we have next? Can you replicate, can your replication target be Amazon S3? Uh, yeah, that is coming out in early December. Uh, but yeah, you could set up and deploy a UEB in Amazon S3 and have that be our backup copy target. You will need an EC2 instance of Unitrend's backup software running though, to be able to manage that, and then we will send it to an S3 target. Uh, however, if you happen to be running VMware VMs, and that's the only thing you want to replicate up, I would consider checking out the Unitrends Boomerang, uh, vmboomerang.com, or the Unitrends Boomerang product on our website, 
and you go from there and you can see there's an easy way uh, alternatively just to get your VMware VMs sent up to AWS uh, and kept there utilizing PilotLight and you can spin it up automatically from our uh, interface and then bring it back if need be. Okay. Let's see. Next question is, Dan asks, do you have an approximate ratio of how much storage capacity I will lose if I enable encryption? Uh, off the top of my head, no, it's way too circumstantial. It's a great question to follow up with, uh, whomever is going to follow up with you after the call. Uh, but frankly, the only way to know for sure is uh, you have to just do it and see what happens. Uh, you can go into your appliance and you can see though the deduplication ratio and all that. Honestly, your deduplication should, is going to plummet very, very low, uh, largely due to the fact that deduplication can occur because the logical blocks need to be encrypted. Otherwise, you're actually not protected. So for security's sake, uh, unfortunately, our deduplication engine doesn't look in because we keep that encryption key separate. Okay, let's see. The next question is, does, do SQL databases have to be backed up separately from the physical server that is running SQL? Great question. Um, as of today, they run, uh, you schedule them as a separate job because you're doing a different protection. So here, if I want to protect the files, I need to set up an agent-based asset protection. If I want to back up a SQL database, I need to do a SQL database. So they'll be in separate jobs, but you can schedule at the same time. They'll queue them, you know, whenever the clock hits. And if there's not enough uh, overhead to do it, it'll wait, and then it'll perform it after the other one is done. Uh, for your own sake, probably schedule them separately, but it shouldn't be too big of a hassle because you're trying to protect different pieces. Protecting the files is very different from actually protecting the databases. Okay. Let's see. Eddie has a question. Back to the other cloud question. Are your servers on AWS or you have your own cloud data center? Uh, it's our own data center. We, we protect it hard and true. Uh, hardened data centers, it's multiple sites, um, SSA 16 certified. I, for security's sake, I don't give out too many details, but if you want to, you can check out some of our security audits that tell you about how uh, successful and efficient our, uh, our uh, cloud environment is. All right, we have time for just a few more questions here. Barry asks, can you show how to set up the email for the email reports? Sure. That's really easy. Come over to the Configure tab. You come over to the appliance you're trying to configure the email reports for. When you first set it up, by the way, there was a way to be able to do that. But in here, you go to Edit, Email, and ta-da! You can simply add in uh, who you want, which is the SMTP, and which recipients you want to include as a part of these email reports, and which reports you want them to receive. Simply hit Save and it'll configure that, and you'll be able to have those email reports going off to whoever and whomever you want. And then the follow-up question that Barry had was, how often are synthetic foals performed, or what trips a synthetic foal? Yeah, it's roughly every two weeks. It really depends on the, uh, the status and the interface of what's doing, how many uh, backups are performed and the retention requirements. But we see roughly synthetic run every about two weeks. And the appliance will figure it out and do what's best uh, for your environment. Okay, let's see. All right, Alan asks, currently we, we archive the data to an offsite Dan, does this new version still allow us to do that? Uh, same. All the features in the uh, all the features in 9.0-15 are still in 9.1. Uh, we never really supported going to uh, WAN uh, SANS uh, unless you had a really good connection and not a lot of data. But uh, all the jobs and all the stuff you're doing before should be able to be. Fun You'll see the engine wasn't really adjusted. We just added some features. So anything you're doing now, you should still be able to do uh, with 9.1 release. Okay. Eric has a question. CFO wants seven years of backups. Can that be accomplished on cloud services such as Amazon S3 or only on the only on Unitrends forever? 
that uh, grandmother, mother, daughter uh, strategy is currently only available for our forever cloud. It will be coming out in the near future uh, to be available to do in Amazon and other stuff like that. But as of today, it's not possible. If that's something that's really vital, uh, talk to the person. That's something we can talk about in more detail uh, with the person who's going to follow up with you. Say that that's something you're really looking forward to do or not. Uh, let us know how important it is and we can talk about what current options we have to help you try to get to that kind of retention. All right. Let's do one more question as we're running out of time here. Awesome. Let's see. Do I need to own a Unitrends physical appliance in order to use the Office 365 backup solution, or can I simply go from cloud to cloud with no appliance in between? Great question. Uh, no, you do not need Unitrends for our Office 365 protection. Uh, you can simply work with our software as a service without requiring you uh, to um, – to, uh, you can work through the software without having our backup. Obviously, it's easier to have it all under one uh, – one support line, one group to, to help you, but no, you do not need to be uh, a current uh, Unitrends uh, appliance uh, purveyor, uh, as the case may be. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. We're just about out of time. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded, and you'll receive an email with a link to the on-demand version. Thanks again for joining us, and we look to see, forward to seeing you on future webinars. Take care, everybody.